guys, it's Cauliflower, and today I have for you my monthly favorites and not so favorites video. So this is just a video compiled of all the things that I have been liking and loving over the month of, what is this, February? <laughs> How to think about it. The month of February, and then there are just some things that I tried this month that did not work out for me that ended up in my not so favorites little category. But we're gonna go start with the, I feel like I'm just like slumping down. We're gonna start with foundation. And I'm gonna be really, really just boring because I probably just showed you guys this haul, but I have been using this foundation for the last couple of weeks. And I have to say that it's probably going to be one of my holy grail foundations ever. And that is from The Ordinary. This is The Ordinary Coverage, not the serum foundation, which I thought it was when I first purchased it. So now I have to go and purchase the serum foundation just to compare and see how I like the two. But um, I absolutely love this foundation from the packaging, which has the pump, which is very convenient and also from just application. The moment this goes on my skin and blends in my skin, which is, it is the perfect color, I have mine in 1.2Y light, which I was a little afraid of, but it's not um, as bright or as light as I thought it would be. It's more for the yellowish undertones, which I have in my skin, which I appreciate the ordinary doing it the right way, instead of some of these other foundations that kind of cancel out the yellow and do more of like the bright. But this doesn't do that. This evens out everything on my face, um, takes away, well, it doesn't take it away, but it covers everything. It covers my freckles. It covers, you know, blemishes if I break out or what have you. What I wish it would cover is gray in my hair. Do you see this? I mean, like, really? Why is it that I always realize that I have gray in my hair when I start to film? Anyway, so until The Ordinary makes hair color, <laughs> I'm just gonna have to deal with that. But I love it. The formula is just really nice. It's not too loose. It's not too creamy. Blends in nicely with my little uh, beauty blender or my my uh, would-be beauty blender that I use from Shop Masse. Um, and it's $6, you guys. It's $6. It's so worth it. The Ordinary, honestly, I know there's been some controversy with the maker owner of The Ordinary, but I don't I don't get into politics. I get into the products, and the products are good, so we're just going to leave it at that. Okay, next thing, and I probably should have started off with this, but it is a primer, and it is from Catrice. This is the Light Correcting Serum Primer. Now, the thing about this is that I don't know about what light correcting means. For me, light correcting means that it's going to fix the lighting, and no, your face is not a bulb, your face is not a lamp, your face is just your face, and it's not fixing anything, but what it does do is it gives you a nice little luminescence. It gives you a nice little glow. If you mix it in with your foundations, you can get a nice dewy finish from this. It's not overly looking like you just threw on a mirror ball or some sort of like, you know, galactic galaxy, um, just twinkle dust. It looks really natural on your skin. It blends in really nicely. Um, and I think it would probably be a better um, option if you don't want to pay for Becca's backlight to go for this. This is about 10 bucks as opposed to Becca's like $32 one. So I've really been enjoying this. <laughs> really been enjoying this. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about, and these are new to my collection, so I know I'm being lame and I'm being that that just that YouTuber that does this. Like, of course, cauliflower, I'm gonna try something once or twice and think it's like the best thing ever because everybody else is talking about it. But that's not what this is about. I'm honest here, people. Honest. If you want honesty, you got it here. All right. So yes, I have been trying two new to me. I know it's been like you know highly uh, whatever all over YouTube. I have here the Makeup Revolution. This is the Conceal and Define Full Coverage Concealer. I have mine in, what the hell are you in? This is in C2. So I think this is one of the lighter ones. Yeah, C2. This one is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. And this is in the color Fair. Now, I like both of these for two separate different reasons. Now, let's go to this one. This is more of the hyped one now up on YouTube. Everybody's comparing this to the Tarte um, Shape Tape, which Tarte Shape Tape was never my holy grail, so I'm not about like, oh, it's a dupe for sharp, ta <laughs> sharp tape. <laughs> for the tape shape, sharp tape. It's going to be okay. Anyway, for that one, the Tarte Mix. Anyway, 
Um, for me, this one is actually a really nice creamier, and I want to compare this more to the NARS creamy concealer, which I have, and to me, it looks good on some days and bad on the others, depending on how tired my eyes are going to be that day, but I kind of want to compare it more to that because it kind of reminds me more of that than the shape tape. Aha, now I said it right. Now, as far as applicator, yes. That is definitely very shape tape. As far as the um, consistency, it's not shape tape. Shape tape to me is a lot thicker than this. This is very, this is a little thinner. It's a little bit more emollient than most concealers, but it looks really good under eyes. It brightens, it does exactly what um, I want concealer to do. It does not look cakey, which is my problem with, with the Shape tape sometimes it can get to the point where it looks a little it looks great when you first put it on and then about an hour in you're like what is that? What is that pound cake going on underneath my eye? I didn't ask for no Sarah Lee. Okay. But anyway, so I like it for that reason, but I'm gonna tell you that I just dropped it. Upon trying the new the new for me, ColourPop No Filter Concealer, I like this better. In fact, it kind of reminds me of a cheaper concealer, the one that I use from Shop Miss A, except I like this a heck of a lot better. The one from Shop Miss A, now remember it's only a dollar and it's a little bit more that you have to blend it out and it's very, very bright. I've talked about it a million times on my channel. This is perfect. This is the right consistency. This is the right color and it brightens nicely. I'm wearing it today, not that you can tell. I don't know why I say that to the camera. I'm wearing it today, can you tell? Can you tell it's this concealer? I could be wearing 20 different concealers. You wouldn't know which one I would be wearing, but again, I'm honest. So yes, I am wearing this today. I love it. It's exactly what I just said as far as like going on easy, as far as not being so hard to blend and being the right color. And I do appreciate um, ColourPop having such a great formula and being very inexpensive. So yes, that's definitely why I love it. So there you are. <laughs> okay, let's go into the thing I always go into uh, first normally is mascara. I'm going to actually say it now. Actually, I say it last. I'm going to say it now because I'm boring. I'm boring. When I love a mascara, I tend to keep using it. So I have been continuously using the Lancome Monsieur Mr. Big, which I love, and I probably should get a new tube because this one is probably out on its on its last leg. But um, I've been trying this, and I actually like it this month. This is the MAC Extreme Dimension 3D Black Lash. I don't know if I've tried this before, and maybe I have and didn't like it, but for some reason now I do. I like the fact that it makes my lashes stay straight up. I mean, not like this way, like this way. Um, it's not a curling mascara by any by any means. It's just a lengthening, which is why it says extension dimension. So it gives you a little bit of that. It's nice and dark, dark black, which I really appreciate. Um, and I like the fact that I can get these in sample sizes because I don't like to make that commitment with um, MAC especially. Not that I don't like MAC products, but some MAC um, mascaras in the past have not done it for me. And I swore I tried this before, but it works. It works for me this month. So we're giving it the favorite for the month. Okay, I have a couple of lip products that I really do like and really have been using. Why do I say really? Like I've been using everything cauliflower. <gasps> I feel so Jenna Marbles today. I don't know what that says. Either this month and I have been coming up with some really nice looking lips. I am more into the glossy lips now. I'm not into the dry. I'm over that. I'm over the matte. So what's been going on is these Burt's Bees right here, they give you a nice little wash of color without being too matte down or too dry looking or anything of that nature. Um, this one in particular... Of course, I should be wearing my glasses. This is in Sweet Sunset. Okay, I got this from Rite Aid. We all heard about this on my haul. This is what it looks like. This is a really pretty, pretty color. Now, on the lips, just looking like that, you think, oh, I don't know, it looks too dark, it looks too boring. But then I throw on the Essence Shine, Shine, Shine Wet Lip Gloss, and this is in the color Happiness in a Bottle. I will agree with this, Essence. It is Happiness in a Bottle because every time I use this, my lips just look so pretty and healthy and glossy, but not looking greasy, which I appreciate. And it lasts. This stuff lasts a long, long time. Normally, glosses on me because my lips tend to be very dry, go 
and suck out all of that wonderful hydration, all of that wonderful glowy, glossy creaminess. No, but not this one. This one has not done that. And I've been really impressed because I've used this over my Anastasia lip, uh, lip liquid lipsticks and they've been working with that as well. So if you want an inexpensive lip gloss that doesn't make your lips look too goopy or doesn't take all the hydration out of it once you're wearing it for an hour, then pick this up. It was like, oh God, probably between the three and four dollars that Essence normally is. But it's really, really good. And the color on this, I should probably show you that. <laughs> the color on this is just gorgeous. I mean, look at that. You could wear that all on its own. It is just so pretty, but it looks so nice over darker hues or if you want to wear like a really dry matte lipstick or matte liquid lip you can definitely do that with this because it will pump it up give it a little bit of sheen and sexiness and just exactly what you want your lips to look like all right okay next is what i've been using for highlight this month and i am have got to say i try not to be this big highlight person i've seen so many highlights come and go <laughs> that i'm like eh, uh, uh, eh, uh, uh, maybe i don't know but i'm gonna say this and thank you boxycharm this is from vintage by jessica lipskinned and this we got a few months ago i, I want to say probably last year sometime in our boxycharm this is the illuminating highlighting face kit in rose quartz and chocolate diamond now now i don't know why it got lost in my drawer but it just did but look at these two these are so beautiful and the one i'm using and using today is the rose quartz this is by far one of the most blinding highlights not even going to do any justice on my hand right now blinding highlights look at this this is that highlight right there it is gorgeous. It is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. It looks so pretty. Um, and again, I'm very sort of fair, lightish tone with the yellowish undertone, skin tone. So on my skin, it really shows up and it doesn't show my texture. That's the reason why I'm not very up on wanting to purchase more new highlighters because let's face it, I'm older and a lot of these newer highlighters like to show texture or it's like a little bit too much for me. So this is perfect because it is blinding and it is beautiful, but it doesn't look like I just packed on oatmeal <laughs> on my skin. So I've been really loving it, really, really loving it. Okay, next thing is blush. I have one blush and this is another by Revolution, Makeup Revolution, the uh, matte blush. This, was <laughs> this one is in Beloved. I have another one. This one takes the cake. I love this one so much. It is, I don't know what happened to the formula or maybe it's just this particular color. My other one that I have, um, I can't, the name escapes me right now. I'll put it down below. But the other one was a little bit more drier and chalkier. Even though I love the color and I love the finish, this one is so much smoother. When it goes on your skin, it just looks so, so smooth. The powder is so silky and so pretty and it blends so nicely. And yes, it is on my skin today. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous blush. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna talk about in favorites are, cause I don't have a favorite palette this month. I have four palettes here that I have been loving and using and kind of combining. So I'm gonna go through them really quickly because I tend to over talk and I got a couple of not so favorites that I need to say something about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, the first one is the NYX Color Intuitive. This by far was probably my best purchase overall of February at Ulta. Not only did I find it in a clearance section where it was normally 20 bucks and I got it for $5, but it is such a good freaking palette. You get everything you need for your face in here. You get the six colors for your eyes. You get a shimmer, two shimmers. You get this wonderful bronzer. You get this really gorgeous highlight and you get this like almost pink topper blush kind of a thing, which is gorgeous. You can use that as a blush highlight or what have you. Um, what I love about this is, is it's cohesive. You can use it all together. You don't even have to use these things for what they're said to use them for. So this I've been using as an inner corner highlight. This I've been using as a lid color every now and again, or maybe a highlight. This one as well, I've been using this as a crease color. And then these six shades are absolutely gorgeous. Are they super pigmented? No, but I don't have an issue with that because when they do go on your eyes, they look really, really good. It's almost like you're giving yourself a little bit more of a artist's 
hue, like an, like more of a watercolor painting kind of a thing instead of it being very acrylic and very opaque, which I appreciate and I like it. I like it that you can integrate all of these products and it was a great find at $5, so definitely a favorite there. Okay, so I'm hooked. I'm hooked on ColourPop this month. I can't stop using my Kathleen Lights Dream Street. Um, this is the one I always go to. It is my go-to. I love this palette so, so much, and I probably will still be using it in the warmer months because it's just that type of palette. I talked about it last month, and now I have another one to add to it. This is the Yes Please by ColourPop, which is cute AF on the front, and I appreciate that it gives you all of the colors on the back. So I am loving this palette as well. This is now what's on my eyelids, which I will insert a closer picture of me wearing this. Um, I love this. These are just stunning, stunning shadows. ColourPop really knows how to do bright and really knows how to do just when you want your eyes to look like the color in the pan, ColourPop knows how to do that without looking like it's going to be either really chalky or so overly pigmented that you can't blend it in with the other hues that are in the palette. And I appreciate ColourPop for that. And they're very, very inexpensive. I think this was like, I got this on Dope actually, which if you've never used the app Dope, you can actually uh, get a lot of products that are, oh God, Sephora, ColourPop, so many different stores you can get, and you can get them discounted. So I got this on that app. I think I paid like 12 or $13 for it and it was well worth the money. Really enjoying it, love it, love it so much. And my last palette I wanna talk about is from Bad Habit. This is also off of another app called Shop Hush, which I've been mentioning. This is the Aphrodite palette. This is the comparison to the Huda, 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 yo! The Huda beauty. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Um, this is a striking palette. I was a little bit skeptical the first time I used this, because a couple of these colors need a little work, I'm not gonna lie, not gonna say they're all so perfect, but there are so many different shimmers in here that work beautifully as the eye toppers, or if you wanna do that halo, halo, look on your eyes. These are really pretty for that, and I love the mixture of jeweled tones that these are, but I love the mattes as well, and I love, love, love the fact that we've got a really beautiful, gorgeous red in there, and a darker uh, copper, these are very rich shades, very fall-like shades, but you could still use this palette. I mean, this was one of the ones on that website that I think is really popular for Bad Habit. I'm glad I picked it up in time. Um, I'm still debating whether I wanna get the one that's compared to the Anastasia uh, palette that everybody, uh, you know, the... Talk about some ones that I wasn't too impressed with this month, and it's only four products, but um, I'm gonna start with Physician's Formula. This thing right here. I really, really wanted to like this, but unfortunately for Physician's Formula, this is the reason I think why they end up in clearance bins. And I'm gonna say this, packaging on this is amazing. I love the fact that it's so sleek and everything else and it keeps it nice and mess free as opposed to their little cardboard ones that just you know magnetize and close that way. This is a little bit more, that's why I can't open it. This is a little bit more sturdy. Here we go. And the other thing I appreciate is when you set this on your counter or on your dresser, wherever you do your makeup, it sits up the actual shadow. So your shadows sit up like this. So it's sort of easier to get in with your brush, but um, yeah. What I don't understand about this palette, and it's not really a big deal, but why are we putting so many lighter shades in here how many times can you really use a light shade you need one for just like your you know beginning or your brow bone and then maybe just like a little bit of an inner corner i don't understand why we need this chalky white right here i don't understand that and you can see it is very chalky and it does absolutely nothing it does nothing it blends away it goes bye bye um the rest of it is underwhelming it's not as pigmented as I would like it to be. Um, these colors are dismal. I hate to say it like that, but they are. They're very dismal. They disappear very quickly. Um, I'm very surprised because Physician's Formula normally has really good, uh, like their shimmer strips are really nice. I don't like their packaging for their shimmer strips, but if the shimmer strips came in here, say that several times over, if they came in here, it would be a lot better. These are just not, the quality that I would like Physician's Formula shadows to be, so I wasn't very impressed. I didn't spend too much on this because it was a clearance item and with good reason. 
All right, let's talk about a under eye concealer I'm not happy with, do not like, and I took this on the um, suggestion of Jessica Braun and it's by no means her fault, but I'm blaming her anyway. Um, this is the Ulta Beauty Full Coverage Liquid Concealer. Now, I know, I know, I put this in a favorites video. The problem with this is that after a while, or even upon putting it on your eyes, I don't know what this is, but it's very white cast. It's sort of just, it looks like this. I don't know, now you can't tell, because there it is. It looks, okay, it looks like this, and then all of a sudden you put it on your eyes and it starts to oxidize, and it turns this like yellowish sheen. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but it puts on this cast underneath my eyes I don't like. I don't like it, and it looks brighter in the tube than it is on your eyes. I guess it's starting to oxidize, and this is the lightest shade, so it's not like I didn't get the lightest shade that they have. I don't know. I'm just not that impressed with it. Um, to me, my Catrice one, my camouflage, so much better, and I think it was actually cheaper. This was actually a, a deal that I got with... Uh, the other thing that I'm going to show you that I was very underwhelmed with, and it's also from Ulta, and this also came in a set which I purchased, which had a little like sponge and another primer. This is the Ulta Beauty Dewy Spray. Dewy is right because the moment you spray this stuff, and I'll just show it to you guys because this stuff, <laughs> this stuff, it doesn't just mist on your face, it just shoots on your face. And it has this very, very, very strong smell of coconut, which I don't have an issue with. Wait. Yeah, there it is. For some, it has a mist, and then for some reason, there's like one part of this that just shoots right to your temple, like right there. Like I have this like big ball of wetness right there now. Um, yeah, it's dewy okay, because the actual stuff in this just shoots on your face. The smell is... Ugh. I'm not big for the coconut oil involving it with, you know, setting sprays. It's not necessary. If I want to put coconut oil on, I'll do that prior to my setting spray. Um, if that's what makes this dewy, then yeah, that's not, uh, no. All right, and the last thing I'm going to complain about, I mean talk about, is the exact thing I said was going to happen, and this is from Hask, the charcoal with citrus. What was I thinking? You're thinking to yourself, why would you purchase a dry shampoo that's got charcoal in it when you know it's going to dry your hair out? Well, it didn't only just dry my hair out. It made my hair straight up dirty. It just made my hair feel like I didn't wash it for two weeks. And I'm a person that washes, it like, washes my hair about two to three times a week, at most three times a week. But this in between, no way, no ma'am. Um, I don't know unless you have this big grease ball on top of your head, even if it would work for that, because it deposits product in your hair. It's almost like it's a texturizing spray. If you want to use it for that, this is perfect. But for a dry shampoo to like give your hair a little bit more life in between shampoos or make your hair feel clean, no ma'am, this does not work for that whatsoever. And it's a shame, but it's going right back to Ulta because I am not, I'm not about that. So yeah, that is it. I'm sorry this was such a long video. I guess I felt chatty today. Uh, what were some of your favorites this month? Did you try any of the products that you saw here? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure that you guys always hit that bell to know when my next videos are um, about to be uploaded. And uh, stay tuned. I will see you very, very soon in another video. <laughs> Bye, guys. Like you guys are looking at my forehead. Feel like my head is just so big in this video. I don't know what to do. There's no editing that fixes this problem. So we're just gonna have to go with it, okay?